Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. It's nice to see you all again, popping in for a video about the new Alien movie. So I'm going to talk about a couple other things before we get to that. So I'm going to have timestamps below if you want to just hop right to that review. Just help yourself. So as some of you may know from my Instagram posts that um, just on a personal note, my mother did pass away last week. You know, I'm just in that stage, that weird stage of grieving. So on Saturday, I was feeling so depressed and so stressed that I did what I always love to do when I'm uh, feeling that way. And I went to see a movie, especially a good horror film. And uh, I really enjoyed Alien Romulus. And I'll talk about it more down the road a bit here. Um, just a few other things I want to go over. But please do stick around for that or check out the timestamp. But before we get there, I did get another package from Patrick. Always so, I think I, I opened, oh, I'm feeling something. Oh, wow. You know, it actually feels good to be just hanging out with you guys and chatting today. It really does. I have been offline for a while, except on Instagram. Lovely card with a beautiful sticker. My nails are not done. I'm, I just kind of threw my look together today, and it's so humid that my hair is, you know, it's just the way it is. But... I am ready for spooky season. Oh, lovely. Uh, and this was, looks like it was typed on an old typewriter. Dear Regina, in celebration of Alfred Hitchcock's birthday, I didn't even know it was Hitchcock's birthday until I saw this online, so this is cool. I thought I would send along this book by the author of Capote's Women, the basis for this past season of Feud, which I have not watched yet, but I do plan on watching it, for you to enjoy. I also sent along a small comfy surprise for you when I saw it I was reminded of you to enjoy that's lovely I hope you'll be able to celebrate and enjoy the birthday of the master of suspense with a good book or film all from the coziness of your gothic library of course sincerely Patrick that is a lovely letter so so well written I'm going to keep this one with your other cards which I've kept whoops um I knew Hitchcock had to be a Leo I'm guessing Oh, nice. Hitchcock's Blondes, the unforgettable women behind the legendary director's dark obsession. I know about uh, Hitchcock's blonde obsession, and I can't wait to read this. This is awesome. By Lawrence Lemer, author of Capote's Women. This looks really good. What is this? Oh, a, ooh, a green hoodie. Blessed are the weird people. Oh, wow. The writers, the artists, the dreamers, outsiders, for they, for they force us to see the world differently. Well, that is a cause I can get behind. Look at this with the little hood. And you know what? Green is my favorite color. You wouldn't know that because I don't wear a lot of green, but it has always been my favorite color. You know, Shakespeare said, love is green. This is beautiful, Patrick. Thank you so much. And hey, these are my peeps right here, my peeps. And I hope anyone watching relates to this. I'm sure you do. That's lovely. That is so lovely. See, it's fun to hang out with you guys. All right, so before I start talking alien, I wanted to uh, mention some things that I've been reading or have read. I finished a really good book by our friend Oliver C. Seneca. Oliver was in one of our anthologies, horror tube anthologies, Lurking in the Dark, but I might not we did three, so it's hard to remember. But anyway, I'll link his uh, link to this book below. He also has a YouTube channel. And he uh, wrote a book called Shaded Grove. And it is all about a uh, an insane asylum and about these two sisters who get uh, into a wreck on the side of the road and they just take shelter. It's a terrible storm. They take shelter inside this haunted insane asylum and it's great. It's so good. It's so old school, old uh, paperbacks from hell kind of feel to it. I've read some of Oliver's work before, and he's really good at this kind of old school style. And this one especially has a lot of depth. I really enjoy the relationship with the sisters and how it relates back to uh, the grandmother character who they visit inside this asylum. It's done very well and very believably. So uh, definitely check that out. I do recommend the book. And the other book I'm reading is Criminales Presents the uh, Garbology. He sent me this nice copy, actually sent me two copies, and I'm reading one copy and keeping the other on my shelf, try to keep it nice. But uh, I'm about halfway through this book, and I'm really enjoying reading all the stories. 
Now, I have a story in this uh, book, and uh, it's called The Lover's Boneyard, and I'm proud to be part of it, and also enjoying all the other stories. Some of these authors, like Alex from the Bookubus, I'm familiar with, some I'm not. There's a huge variety here of trashy stories, and mine is in the uh, adult section, but there's like a true crime, like a noir story that I really liked, like a Western feel to some of the stories. It's really great. So definitely check out the anthology. The whole presentation has a really cool pulp feel to it. So definitely check it out. I've also been reading, and I'm about halfway through this as well, Alfred Hitchcock's Haunted Houseful. I have several of these wonderful anthologies from the 1960s, speaking of Alfred Hitchcock. And uh, this one came out in 1961, and it's great. And I just read a story that takes place in my hometown of New Hope, Pennsylvania. And as I'm reading it, I remembered when I was a kid how excited we were because we read these as children to each other. My my older sister would read these to us as bedtime stories, which might explain some things. But uh, yeah, it was really exciting to read about my own hometown and all the landmarks that are still there. So... This is a great book, and the illustrations are incredible. And I also wanted to remind everyone that we still have a few, whoops, of the summer bookworms left, and the new uh, one is coming out in the fall, and it's all about witches. And if you don't want to submit a story, the deadline's coming up September 1st. Story, essay, that kind of thing. Or a poem. So I wanted to talk about Alien Romulus as a film, something I really enjoyed. I'm going to talk about it a little bit without spoilers and then some with spoilers, and I'll let you know when, when that is. Now, you may recall Batilda got in trouble with an alien just in the last couple of years, and as a result, uh, Ailey came into our lives, and he's doing well. So I do enjoy some alien uh, memorabilia, like my alien program from 1979, and... I have a xenomorph doll that unfortunately fell off my shelf and was beheaded at least once and something else broke. He's kind of been glued back together, so he's a little delicate. But when I went to the film, I just could not resist getting a souvenir alien xenomorph head. Isn't that fun? I was hoping the mouth would move. It does open... I don't want to. I don't want to break it, but it's like a popcorn container. Now it was very expensive, and the popcorn was actually extra. Or maybe it's like a, you know, if you get sick in the movie, or it's so scary and so gory, you have a, a little barf container, which is kind of gross thinking about how uh, that would work in this thing. But anyway, I couldn't uh, uh, resist buying this merch. This is official Alien Romulus. Only in theaters, merch. And they had some other cool ones, too. I really wanted to buy all of them. They had this neat um, specimen container, like popcorn bucket. But I went with this one because I just I thought it was the coolest. And, yes, it was expensive. I think it was almost 40 bucks without the popcorn. But now I'm looking, and they all sold out, and they're selling for, like, twice as much on eBay. So I was glad I got mine. So this is the non-spoiler review of Alien Romulus. So this is a film that just came out the other day. It's directed by Fede Alvarez. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. It is produced by Ridley Scott, and it is the seventh installment in the Alien franchise, set between the events of Alien and Aliens. Okay, so that's where it fits in the timeline. And uh, It follows a group of downtrodden young space colonists in pursuit of better life conditions who encounter hostile creatures while scavenging a derelict space station. It begins where you see the wreckage of the Nostromo and the Xenomorph. I always call them the alien, but we'll call them Xenomorph uh, because there are different levels of that alien creature stuck in an asteroid and so they're collecting this debris which i was a little bit well wait a second i remember at the end of alien the ship was 
blown to smithereens. I, I don't think that there would have been any pieces left of the Nostromo. Just saying, I'm being picky. And also, uh, the the alien creature was shot through the uh, the hatch pretty far away from when the the ship exploded. Just saying, I'm being picky. But, you know, it does kind of make a good beginning that bridges the uh, the first movie into this present time. So we have this group of young people working on this very uh, dismal uh, space colony. But it looks like they're on a planet that kind of resembles Saturn. It has rings around it. And uh, the main character, or the two main characters, I should say, are really good. We have Rain and her brother, Andy. Kaylee Spaney and David Johnson. They are the two main characters of the film and are the best characters. And they're actually very good characters. So they're trapped on this colony. It's, uh, they're, they're very young, these people, and all in their, like, or look like they're in their early 20s or late teens. They're trying to escape this place because their parents have just been uh, worked to death and Rain tries to get her transfer to this other planet. You see just a glimpse of it. It's like this Eden away from this horrible world they're in. Yavaga, maybe Yavaga. And you see Rain uh, just at the beginning having a glimpse of this, in her dreams, what this beautiful utopia is like that she's trying to reach. Well, she goes up to uh, get her transfer and she's refused. It's like, oh, no, you need to work another, I don't know what they tell her, five to ten years or something. And you see her brother Andy, and he seems like he's a little mentally slow. And the other kind of people, are, you know, it's kind of a crude world, kind of picking on him a little bit. It almost has a feeling of like a Ridley Scott. It, it has a futuristic um, Blade Runner kind of darkness to it. It's raining. It's dripping. It's all dark. There's no sunlight. I don't know how these people survive on a planet with no sunlight, but uh, it's just a terrible place. So you don't blame them for wanting to get out. So they meet up with this other group of friends. The sense maybe Rain had a relationship with one of the characters. Uh, I forget his name. Honestly, the other characters, they're not as memorable as, let's say, the original Alien crew, which was one strike against this film. It's really hard to top Alien. And of course, Aliens is great too. I always bristle a little bit when someone puts Aliens above Alien. To me, nothing beats Alien. But I'll talk a little bit about where I think this one uh, ranks in all the Alien films. And I don't count the Alien Predator movies as part of the franchise. I, to me, I just never got into that mixing of those two films. Uh, it, it To me, it just reminds me of, you know, Godzilla meets King Kong or something. It just, it's, it's just, I'm sure they're entertaining, but I've never watched those films. And I don't know if I ever will. But anyway, uh, so the plan is they're going to go uh, take a small craft uh, to this derelict space station that's kind of just orbiting and steal the uh, ch sleep chambers. I forget what they're called. I'll put it here. There's a specific name for them. Uh, so they can put themselves to sleep because it's going to take many years to get to this other planet. So that's the plan. And you can imagine things go all awry once they get there. And there are... Uh, aliens there. There are alien creatures, there are face huggers, and more. So that is the unspoily section of what's going on. Now I'll talk about the film a little bit, and there will be spoilers. I have to say, I'm really glad I went into this film completely cold. I had seen the trailer maybe once or twice on YouTube. I'm really glad I knew nothing about it. So I say that as a warning. If you haven't seen it yet, Definitely see it first and then come back and watch all the reviews on it and the discussions, including mine, if you'd like. But uh, yeah, so spoilers ahead. There are two sections of this station, Romulus and Remus, like the uh, twins that suckled the she-wolf that was the beginning of the city of Rome. It does have some significance, I guess, but I don't know. I'm just coming out of this film, having just watched it once without really doing too much research into it. I, made, I did take some notes. So we find out on the um, planet that Andy, 
or maybe before, we find out that Andy is actually a synthetic. And the reason he's he's coming off a little simple-minded is because uh, he was found on a junk heap by uh, Rain's dad, her, her parents are dead, and he was programmed by the father to take care of his daughter. And these two have a really sweet relationship and I believed their relationship and I, I bought into it emotionally and this was one of the definitely the pluses in this film. So once they get to the uh, space station they find that that they need more fuel to fuel these chambers so they break into the section of the ship where the fuel is contained and it's it's creepy like the atmosphere in this movie is great it really captures the the essence of the original alien and in the tone it's dark you feel the um the mechanics the the dirtiness of the mechanics and sometimes in science fiction and even in like uh the other films prometheus and covenant the the space world is depicted as being so clean and you're not really feeling the grease and the, the mechanics of it and the things breaking down the way you do in in this film and in the original alien uh that is definitely a plus too. So they're in this uh, chamber where the uh, the ice that keeps the uh, specimens alive. Oh, there's a bunch of uh, face huggers in uh, that have been colonized. Which, of course, as as a viewer, we're seeing it. So you have to remember we're going into this movie knowing that we're going to see alien creatures. The characters are ignorant of this, just like I was ignorant of. Uh, what I was going to see in 1979 when I walked into a movie theater and saw Alien for the first time. You cannot even imagine how great that was. And, and no one knew that that chest burster was going to happen. I mean, it just was like the screams. I can still remember the screams that I know I was screaming too. Nothing really kind of beats that the first high of seeing Alien for the first time in the movie theater in 1979. But uh, this kind of brought back some of that old magic for me. I do appreciate it. So they're in, uh, I think one of the guys is called Tyler. It's kind of maybe Reigns. They have a little bit of relationship. There's a, a girl named Navarro. And then there's this other guy, I forget his name, but he was really annoying. He had a real, a strong like Cockney accent. Now I don't know where all those accents come from so far into the future, but Hey, you never know. So, um, they get stuck. The boys get stuck in. Oh, and there's another girl uh, who is stays on the shuttle, and she is she's pregnant. So as soon as I found out she was pregnant, I'm like, oh, there's something going to happen there because there's always that visceral birth imagery in these alien films, and uh, yeah, it wouldn't be an alien film without without something like that. So we know what's coming. So. Um, so they're inside the chamber and they get trapped. These um, face uh, huggers start popping out of their uh, eggs. They're, uh, they've been, they're in like these uh, incubators that start popping out and attacking the boys. And Andy can't, he's not programmed or doesn't have the clearance to put his uh, you know, thumbprint in the door and, and open the door so they can, the door lock so they, they can get them out. But there is a, uh, a robot, a synthetic on board, and he's been, it looks like uh, he got hit with some alien uh, goo and got, uh, you know, melted by acid. He's only half of him's there. Well, this comes the one of the big surprises in the film, which I'm glad I didn't know about going in, but they, uh, you know, put this guy, what's left of him, synthetic up, and lo and behold, it's Ash, although it's not really Ash. It's Rook, but he's the same model as Ash from the original Alien. So it's Ian Holm's likeness. Now, I know they do this with AI, and it, I was wondering, because I'm like, wait, didn't Ian Holm pass away several years ago? I'm not really sure how this works. I know they did it in uh, the new Blade Runner with Sean Young, who came back, and she did some work where she where they were like let her, her use her likeness now which is much older and turn her into the Rachel character but that is Sean Young 
giving her consent to be in this role. Like, I'm not sure how does this work? Does did, when Ian Holm did when he signed in that uh, contract with the original Alien film? I guess it gives you the, the you know they're, they're able to use his likeness to the end of time. I'm wondering if his estate gets paid for that. I'm just wondering about the ethical nature of doing this. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's brought this up, but if you have any information about that, please let me know below because I'm very curious. Anyway, just as far as how the movie is, Ash is back, sort of. I uh, I read a couple of reviews that were that thought the AI wasn't done very well. I totally bought it. I was like, okay, this is fun. I'm there, and same real personality. Kind of explains what's going on with this whole experiment that's happened with with this alien, and uh, they uh, Rain takes the chip out of Ash and puts it or Rook rather and puts it in Andy and reboots Andy and now Andy has like the personality of the I forget the name of the model of the Ash character and the actor did a really good job making that transition and it's done very in a very subtle way and he has now a different directive it's the same directive that ash had to uh you know bring back or preserve this alien creature in this case it's they're extracting the black goo just like in i think this this is bringing it back to uh, either prometheus i think or covenant or one or both of them to uh the corporation to uh it's able to accelerate life and, and, and bring immortality to mankind, but only for certain people, the rich people. So that's Andy's new directive is to maintain that and the, the crew is expendable, just like they were an alien. Okay, so you can kind of imagine then what happens. I'm not going to give away the entire plot because honestly, I don't remember the entire plot because I just watched it. So overall, I really enjoyed Alien Romulus. Was it uh, dumb in some parts? Yes. I'll talk about the good things overall. The look of it, amazing. The score, the sound quality, definitely worth seeing it in the movie theater. The two main characters, Rain and Andy, definitely a plus. I thought both of those actors were wonderful and I would watch them in things again just to kind of see where they're gonna go with their careers. Excellent. I believed their relationship. I cared about them. The other characters, not so much. It wasn't like a well-rounded group of characters that we've found in other alien movies. And then toward the end, I felt like I felt like they tried to cram way too much into this film as far as some of the the ridiculous I mean, I know we, we have a suspension of disbelief, but some of it went way past that as far as like the use of the anti-gravity thing that happened and um, the way they use the guns to shoot the, the aliens and uh, the, acid, uh, the acid bile floating through the air. Some of it was uh, just, I was rolling my eyes at some of it. And, and then also the, the creature, creature, I guess it was the twist, the new creature that's created at the end that the, um, the pregnant girl gives birth to uh, in, a, in a pretty gross way. I felt that that was, a, it was supposed to be like, wow. It was, to me, it was a little weak. It kind of looked like the, a mix of a xenomorph with like the engineer head. I just wasn't really feeling the creature that much. I didn't find him that scary. I found it a little bit silly. But overall, either I just have a very low expectation after seeing Prometheus and Covenant and I'm easily entertained, but I, I thought this one was actually really good. Not great, but really good. So I would put my uh, ranking, number one, of course, Alien, then Aliens, and I probably would put this one as a tie with Alien 3. Then, uh, what was it, Alien Resurrection, that one was really not good at all. Then, but I, I might put Covenant, Alien Resurrection, and then Prometheus, which wasn't very good, but Anyway, I, I might have forgotten a few along the way, but I would definitely put this one up there. So let me know in the comments below if you've seen Alien Romulus. I would love to hear your thoughts. So that's
that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library, and I'll see you soon. Bye.